So we've discussed the two tools already, the complementary DNA creation and recombinant DNA technology using restriction enzymes, but we haven't even discussed one of the most frequently used tools in molecular biology, and that is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. And this will always now make me think of my very first day at TJ. They were giving us a tour of the building, all the new teachers, and I instantly knew who the other biology people in the group were because they walked us by the principal's conference room and they called it PCR. And we were the only people with really odd looks on our faces like, what, this school has a whole room just to run PCR? No, it's the principal's conference room. But it's just funny to me because it's such a big deal to biologists, this very simple process that has made an enormous amount of difference to the way we work with DNA and think about DNA. What is so great about this is that instead of creating complementary DNA or cDNA and then inserting it into a bacteria so that that bacteria can make lots of copies for you, this will directly make copies of your DNA, it, like millions of copies, in just a few hours. So it's much simpler. It takes a day or week-long process into a few hours, so you could do a couple runs of PCR in a single day rather than waiting days for your cDNA to come out. So how does this actually work? Well, you're going to need some a special DNA polymerase that can survive high temperatures. We've actually discovered one. There's a bacteria that lives in hot springs, and we abbreviate it TAC. So that's our TAC polymerase. We're going to need template DNA for whatever gene or segment of DNA that we're wanting to sequence or use. We're going to need lots of nucleotides to provide the raw building material for more DNA. We're going to need some buffers like ions and salts and things to make the environment similar to that of a cell so that all of these enzymes function properly. And we'll need primers so that you can target the piece of the DNA that you want. And so if you have this segment of DNA as your target DNA, you'll want primers that flank that, that are on the outside of that target area so that they can sequence from either direction. And to very briefly describe the chain reaction, you take your DNA and your primers and you heat them to about 95 degrees Celsius and that's going to disrupt the hydrogen bonds and allow the strands of the DNA to separate. You'll bring the heat back down pretty rapidly and that's going to allow the primers to bind to the DNA and then you'll gently warm it back up a little bit and that will allow the polymerase to do its job and synthesize complementary DNA from both those strands. Now you've got two copies. Repeat this again. You'll have four and then eight and then 16. And after 10 rounds, you're going to have over a thousand copies. And after 20 rounds, you'll have over a million copies of this DNA. That only takes a few hours. So we have these awesome machines now called thermocyclers, and that's what they do. They cycle through different temperatures according to a program that you plug into them to control the pace of the change. You can also try different temperatures because sometimes you need a little more than 65 degrees or a little less. And so you just drop your DNA and your mixture with the buffers and the primers and the DNA polymerase you drop all that in and you can go take a lunch break now. You're probably not. You're probably doing something else in your lab. But these have really revolutionized the way we copy DNA. We can take tiny samples of DNA now and get a, amplify them into large numbers and use them for DNA fingerprinting. You need quite a bit of DNA for that to be visible. Or DNA sequencing where you need again, a large quantity to get a better product at the end. So PCR, it's really great. 
We love PCR. You'll probably do lots of PCR if you continue on in molecular biology.